What's up everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. This big beautiful rusty pile of metal here has been marinating in the weeds for I think about a year now, maybe a little more. And what this is, is a tow behind roller. Now I've done videos in the past on another tow behind roller that I have. And these are not just static rollers like uh, you would have behind your lawn tractor or something like that. These are actually construction type soil and gravel and asphalt compaction type rollers. These are engines, these have engines mounted on them and they actually vibrate to achieve a higher rate of compaction than you could with just the static weight alone. As most of you guys that follow the channel probably already know, I've started the process of clearing for my dream shop. I'm gonna build a big workshop out here like I've been dreaming of doing since I was a little kid. So I'm pretty excited about that and uh, I can't do much right now because there's snow on the ground. I can't be cutting and grading. But I have the site cleared. and then... So the next thing I need to do in preparation for the building is get the grade all done. So I'm gonna have to cut off topsoil, cut the subgrade down the way I want it, and then I gotta really compact the living crap out of it so that it, the building doesn't settle in the future. And then on top of that, I'm also gonna have to put in a good bit of fill, bring the building up to the elevation that I want it to be. So to do all that, you need a good compactor. Well, I just got outbid on the one I was hoping to get online, so that one's out. And that leaves this thing. So on the channel here, I have covered several compactors. And the funny thing about all my compaction equipment is that I've got 90% of it for free. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but people uh, that know that I like to mess with this stuff would rather see it go to me and get tinkered with and used again rather than sending it off to the scrapyard. So I actually have three rollers, this being the biggest one. Alrighty, so what we've got right here is a Deutz diesel, um, which is a German air-cooled diesel. So there's no radiator, no coolant in the block or anything like that. It's just basically like an overgrown Briggs & Stratton 5 horsepower with all the little fins on it. And this blower sucks in air and forces it across the cylinders, thus keeping it cool. These are pretty well regarded engines. They seem to run quite a while. and relatively problem free from what I know. I don't know much about them though, other than that. It's a three cylinder, what else? That's it, that's really all I know. Supposedly this thing ran fine, probably close to 30 years ago. But a lot can go wrong for a piece of equipment in 30 years. This one has just been sitting in a woods line before I got it for all of that time pretty much. So. Today I guess we're going to go ahead and try to bar the engine over. I have tried to just turn the belts by hand to no avail. Um, so we're going to have to see what we can do here about getting this thing turned over. So I guess before we even try to do anything here we should probably pull the plug here. Check the oil, see if it even has any. Uh, it's very, very black. But it's there. So I guess that's a good sign. Doesn't look like it has water in it. That's a good sign. Oh, the fuel system looks dandy. So I'm trying to study the fuel system here and figure out exactly what we need to do to get this thing fuel uh, in the event that it even turns over. And I grabbed the throttle arm here and uh, yeah, that's, that's a problem. So that thing is your throttle arm, and I, I don't know exactly what that looks like on the inside of that pump, but that's definitely a major problem. I'd say we can't run it until we have that squared away. So that looks like we would have to, at the very least, remove this oil filter housing. Is that an oil filter? Fuel filter. I don't know. Anyways, at the very least, we'd have to remove that and pull the back cover off of the pump here. And at worst, I guess we'd have to pull the whole pump off and take it to the shop and dive into that. It's not good. So we're not off to a good start here. But like I said, the very first thing we should do, I suppose, is make sure the thing even turns over. So anytime you're gonna tackle an old diesel like this that's been sitting a long time, or any engine for that matter, and you wanna make sure the thing even turns before you go just trying to jam the starter on. Sometimes engines are easy to get a bar on or something, and that's the preferred way to, uh, 
you know, make sure they'll turn over. In this case, we could probably throw a wrench on this nut right here that's easy to get to. Um, and maybe we'd be able to turn everything that way. But, you know, your crank is actually the, be the best way. But in this case, there's a drive shaft coming off of that. So there's no easy way to put a socket down there or a wrench or something. I guess you could use a pipe wrench. I don't think I have one big enough with me to fit on that. Other ways you could do it would be to either pull the starter off or sometimes you can get into the flywheel and uh, use a bar and try to bar it over with the teeth on the flywheel. You just got to watch you don't damage the flywheel when you're doing that. Provided you do all that and then the engine doesn't appear to be moving or free, things you have to look for as well would be something just like that drive shaft you know what does that run to well in this case it runs to a line shaft which spins the counterweight in the drum which makes this thing vibrate so you know if the engine doesn't want to move you got to make it sure whatever it's connected to isn't the reason it's stuck other things could be water pumps alternators stuff like that power steering pumps if it's in a truck things like that can you know be holding it via the belt or you know a lot of diesels have gear driven air compressors stuff like that accessory drive stuff is what you need to check and make sure that isn't what's holding up your engine so let's go ahead and find a socket and jam it on there and see if we can't get this thing to spin any i have never tried to turn this thing since i got it i just pushed it off to the side and said i'll get to it when i get to it so i'm getting to it what do you guys think is this thing gonna turn well <laughs> In this case, that ain't gonna work too well because I'm pulling against the tensioner. So if I try to spin the other way, it might go or it might just break the bolt loose. Ah, look at that. You guys see the crankshaft is indeed turning. <laughs> That's a good sign. There we go. Yeah. Oh, it's getting much easier now. So up here, the air cleaner, where it straps into the intake, the clamp's loose. I didn't do that. God knows how long the air cleaner has just been barely set into this pipe. Now what that allows is moisture, condensation, and maybe even a little bit of water to get into this intake. And, you know, that'll help oxidize the cylinders. So there's definitely a chance that over the years the cylinders have oxidized a bit but uh, apparently not too bad since we're able to spin the engine over that's a really good sign I'm glad to see that pretty much most of the time and it's kind of like a joke among people that mess with stuff like this like oh it spins it'll run it, it is true that most of the time in my experience at least so I'm sure there's gonna be people that argue this most of the time if a diesel engine spins and has compression, it's going to run. Now, it might have fuel issues that you have to fix. It may have other things could be wrong with it. But if it spins and it has compression, good chance you can get it to run. All right, so from my experience with these Deutz diesels, the big thing that happens when they sit is that critters get in through the fan here and build nice big homes and condominiums up inside there um, like this. And what it'll do if you fire it up and don't check that is it'll actually shove all that stuff in and around the cylinder fins and clog it up so that basically no air gets through and it's gonna overheat so we gotta pull this cover off of here and get the critter houses out of there and I'm sure there's a plenty of them in there hopefully we can get these lines busted loose without spinning the lines off just like brake lines these things like to oh that one's coming Anyways, the fittings like to uh, get stuck on the actual line, and then when you turn the fitting, it twists the line, and that'll cause lots of problems. Look at that. All three of them broke loose down here. Hoping it's the same story on the top. Oh, yeah. I get the feeling that these things have been off of here. Probably quite frequently
Now, while we have those lines off of there, before I reinstall them, we'll definitely blow them out with a compressor, make sure we get any uh, dirt or rust out of them. Looking down here at where the lines come out of the pump, these two look okay. This one here looks like it's got some cloudiness. Maybe there's some rust in that fuel. So we'll definitely clean those all out of there real good. So I got lucky here and my JIC kit crosses with uh, these injector lines. So I can just throw these caps on here and know that I'm not gonna get any dirt down in there when I'm blowing it out with a compressor because I'm sure that's what's gonna have to happen. Uh, we got it figured out now. This whole piece slides out. Yeah. That makes sense. Sort of. It's a unique design, that's for sure. Oh, and it's tapered too, so it wedged itself the further I went back. Lovely. Are you guys ready to see what's behind door number one here? Ah. Well, it's not quite as packed as I thought it was going to be, but it's definitely got some stuff in here. Oh, man. Wasp nest from 30 years ago. A bunch of mud dauber nests, a bunch of mouse house. Lovely. So this worm thing here with all these little fins on it, that's also an oil cooler, which is uh, also air cooled as well. It takes advantage of the draft coming through there to cool the oil. look at that huh we got this cleaned out a lot better this looks uh usable in here now i did however see one other issue that apparently has been an issue for quite a while the fan i don't know if you can tell right back there in the corner that fan is just barely missing the uh the cooling pin there. Now, that's for a couple reasons. And you can tell it's been like that. I just made this line here because I tapped this piece of uh, tin work here that direction because that's what, the way it needs to go to line up. Everything was a little out of whack here. Um, but there's mounting holes in hardware and you can see there's an indentation where there's supposed to be like a metal strap or a band that goes around this blower housing and holds it in place and it's not there and doesn't look like it's been there since good lord only knows um but the fan was pushed in too far so uh we can probably run it since obviously they've been running it like this um but we're gonna that's something if if everything works on here that's one of the things that's on our list we need to get that properly secured and make sure that doesn't interference on the cylinder up there i did tap the fan outward a little bit which uh better aligned the belt but it's still off and we're just gonna have to uh, keep an eye on it for right now So, uh, the battery leads have seen better days. Pretty rough shape. All right, well, I got this thing all back together here with the injector lines and everything. Um, our diesel lift pump down here, as you can see, that bowl is uh, fractured. Probably had water in it and it froze. So that's no good. So we would definitely need to replace that and potentially the whole lift pump if it had water in it for that long and froze multiple times. So even though the electrical system is in tatters here, I can't help myself. I kind of have to see if the starter is gonna work. The key is broken off. The wiring's a chewed up mess. Um, but yeah, let's just connect this battery and see if anything catches on fire. Well, I don't smell any smoke yet. That's a good sign. So I'm going out on a limb here, but uh, I really want to try to get some fuel to this thing and see what happens. Even though that throttle shaft snapped off, uh, 
it's probably a bad idea but you know i just I, I i can't help myself i put in a call to area diesel service and they're sending me out a new throttle shaft for this thing so this is an rsv bosch governor on here there's parts available but they're hard to track down so i gave a call to them and they said sure thing get one right out to me so that was cool uh let's put some fuel in this tank see if anything comes through this filter and uh clean the line out and then we'll go ahead and run it to the pump and see what happens oh let's see if it turns over first come on there we go Ooh. Ooh. I'm trying to bleed these injectors up now. I'm not positive on which way the uh, the shutoff is here. I don't know if this is shut off or if this is shut off. It's usually pulled to shut off, but that's not a guarantee. I looked around. I don't see any markings on the governor here. So I think it's going to be in would be on because it's kind of got like a spring deal out here at the end. Anyway, we'll crank it and see if we get anything coming out of here. First drop of fuel coming out there. Nice. Now we got looks like we got a drop out of there. Just waiting on the third one here. Beautiful. Got fuel on all three injectors now. Alright, well this thing could be pretty much ready to fire up here. Now we don't have any throttle control, so I'm gonna have to be ready to shut it down as soon as it starts if it's stuck in wide open. But judging by the amount of fuel coming out of the injectors, I don't think it is. I think it's all the way on low. So we'll give her a little ether just to give her a helping hand. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens here. You guys ready? Contact. <laughs> Better give that starter a break and let the battery charge up a minute. <laughs> so one of the things that could be happening is because we bypassed the lift pump here, I just have gravity forcing it into the pump. We might not be getting enough pressure into the pump to really push enough fuel. Um, but more than likely, I think the issue is this, the, the throttle shaft being snapped off. I think the uh, throttle is probably stuck into the lowest of the low position and you can almost shut a diesel down just by throttling down all the way and i mean like past the point where the arm would typically let you go in fact you could probably shut the fuel off almost entirely which could be what we have here <laughs> Contact.
I can hear like it's just kind of giving one of those little pop, pop, like a, like a, like a. I can hear it's popping a little bit, like it is banging on one or two cylinders. It's trying, but I don't think it's getting enough fuel. All right, guys, well, it's a few days later, and I'm back out here with the roller, and I am determined to get this thing running today. It's a little warmer. All right, so I grabbed me a universal fuel pump here. Since our lift pump is disabled, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in line here, and that should give us four to seven PSI to the injection pump, which I think should be enough to properly feed these injectors. I also took a cue from our one-legged Canadian friend up there, zip ties and bias plies, and went out and found me some better starting fluid. This stuff's 80% ether. The stuff I was using before, I think, was only like 20 or 30%. So he said that this stuff was a big, big help. So he was using John Deere brand. I'm way too cheap, and that's the wrong color for me. So I found this stuff, and uh, yeah, hopefully it works. I just threw this thing in line right here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna try it out now. I'm just gonna be able to clamp it in here. This is all just, you know, extremely temporary, just for proof of concept to make sure this engine runs. When I touch this thing here, it should start filling up and you'll be able to watch that, uh, that fuel screen fill up there. Oh yeah. There it goes. Much better. You hear how much that pump quieted down? That's uh, that's always a good sign. So I cracked this loose over here. That means we got fuel pressure right up to here. I opened that up until all the bubbles quit coming, tighten it back up. So now uh, I guess I'm gonna crack back open these injectors and we're gonna bleed those down too. Hopefully we get a lot more fuel out of them with fuel pressure than we did with gravity flow. All right, we'll connect our fuel pump back up here and we'll go ahead and crank the engine over until we see fuel coming out all three injectors. Just like before, we're getting fuel on two and three, but not number one. Oh, we got a drop out of number one. Heck yeah. We'll try it first without my truck running, but I'm gonna feed it a little bit of the 80% uh, the ether here just to see what happens. Contact. It made one hard ping off that ether. That is just not getting enough fuel. No smoke coming out of that muffler while it's cranking like that means we're just not getting enough fuel into the cylinders. Who's a good boy, huh? All right, well, me and Roscoe are out here again today. Bound and determined to get this thing running. All right, so I think... I'm 99% sure our culprit here as to why this thing won't really crank, or pop off at least, is because of this broken throttle shaft. So like I said, I put in a call to area diesel service because I couldn't find the parts anywhere else. And uh, yeah, within a day, they threw these things in the mail and uh, sent me over a new throttle shaft, which is the part that's broken there. Come on! 
yeah so new throttle shaft and this is just a uh, gasket and seal set for the governor so what I'm gonna try to do is remove the front half of the governor and hopefully we can just swap that shaft out pretty easily in order to pull this thing off though I think we're gonna have to remove the oil filter housing all right first things first before we get started here trying to clean all the snow out of the way and I'm gonna lay down some pig mats underneath here because if I drop any little screws or anything they're just gonna fall down into the snowpack and uh, I won't have them anymore they'll be gone it's really tough to find screws in the snow secondly there is oil inside of the governor assembly or at least there's supposed to be so yeah we don't want to spill any of that on the ground There we go, that sits down out of the way nicely. I think we should be able to get right in here now. Should just be six flathead screws all the way around the body here. And then I think it should disconnect. Oh, man. Holy crap. Here's a simple trick a lot of people don't realize. Most screwdrivers, at least most of the good ones, have some sort of hex shank on them somewhere and you can use a wrench to help get your uh, torque on it. There we go. Broke that guy free pretty easy. Now, I don't think anything's going to fall apart when I remove this. I don't think that there's anything that we can get out of time or out of sync by doing this. I do have some breakdowns that I found online, although they're not the best. And it's quite possible that I'm dead wrong. Somebody's at home screaming at the screen right now going, no, don't separate that cover, you're going to screw everything up. And, uh, well, I wish I could hear you. Sometimes you just got to wing it. Got lots of goopy oil flowing out. Ooh, looks like there might be some frozen water in there too. Definitely is. Glad we're doing this. Look what we pulled out of there. Nice big ice cube. Frozen oil and water mix. Great. All right, so at this juncture, I'd like to reiterate the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing. And I'm just trying to study the internal workings here to figure out how to completely disassemble this thing. I would love to be able to get in here and show you what I'm doing. But again, I don't even know. And B, I can barely see in here, let alone show you guys. So I'll just have to show you once I get it apart. If I get it apart. If is the big word there. There we go. There we go. That was not too bad. You guys see all that? That is all ice. Probably fine. I Actually, I mean, I'm being sarcastic, but at the same time, I'm being serious because I don't see any obvious damage in there. But yeah, we need to figure out how to remove this guy and swap it out for the new one. So there's a good look at the root beer float that's inside of the governor housing here. Um, these are counterweights. That's how the governors work. They spin around and the weight flings outward and controls the throttle of the engine. I believe this here is the fuel plunger. So what I had to disconnect in there was there was a, there was a spring. There was a spring that was hooked up on this tab up here, but there was an, a little pin in an arm that went down through that hole right there in this shaft. And then there was a keeper that swung up and retained it in there so it didn't fall out. This piece here is what's busted. Now to remove it, there's a couple retainer clips on either side. 
and then it looks like this whole bushing insert will push right out of that housing and allow you the slop to kind of finagle it out of there the flip side of that is it does have a spring on the back side here i'm not sure how well you guys can see that but the spring um, goes through this hole here and there's an adjustment screw that it's pushing up against so it's under tension right now so i'm sure the correct way to do it and easiest way to do it is to back that screw off make your life a lot easier but i'm afraid to mess with that adjustment um because i'm not sure how to reset it All right, well, uh, I think it's pretty pretty obvious the problem here. So let's try to finagle the new one back in here. There we go. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. So when I took the old one apart there, I don't know if you guys could really tell, but uh, this bushing that holds the throttle shaft in place there uh, was galled onto the shaft here. So this was frozen stiff, and I don't mean like frozen with water. It, uh, it had bonded itself to the bushing. Not much I can do about that other than just squirt it down with a whole bunch of oil and uh, not let it sit for 30 years. To get it free, I did have to heat it up quite a bit and uh, go at it with the penetrating oil. And of course that broke it free just fine, but uh, consequently we got to replace these O-rings here, which luckily I do believe they came in the kit that Area Diesel Service sent us. So I'm actually glad that uh, I had to tear into this thing because I learned a bit about these governors and I never really realized that they weren't plumbed into the engine oil. So yeah, gonna have to keep an eye out in the future and make sure that uh, change the oil on these things. All right, the shaft is free. We gotta watch if we don't lose that little key. We're gonna need that. No.
That thing just shot over there somewhere. This could take a while. What are the odds that we find that thing? Now there was more snow over here 30 seconds ago. I was uh, over here melting it with a torch. But <laughs> all I heard when I was trying to pry that thing out of the old shaft, it pinged off of my snow shovel there. And then I heard just the slightest little tick over this way. So I had no idea. But uh, yeah, got really lucky. Found that bugger. Needle in the haystack. All right, let's crank this thing over. I have the throttle set to what I believe is wide open throttle. We'll give her a shot here. I'm doing what I should have done a little while ago. Pulling this starter out of here. We're gonna go through, clean up all the connections because I think a lot of the problem is that this thing just is not spinning over nearly fast enough. So if, and you don't know, a lot of times when you have a really slow spinning starter or electrical gremlins, uh, it can be bad grounds or just bad connections in general. A lot of times it's that simple. And this sucker is pretty darn warm from just a little bit of uh, cranking that we did do on it today. So I think we're really close to getting this thing running. I think it, it's gonna go but uh, we kind of need a starter. As you can see, there's a blank hole where the starter should be because it gave up the ghost. It wasn't cranking well to begin with, as you saw, and uh, after taking it apart and inspecting it, I didn't see anything obviously wrong with it. Put it back together, and it seemed like it cranked even slower for whatever reason, and then it just went from slow to not at all. So I sent the starter out to get rebuilt, it usually takes a few days to process through that thing and then, uh, you know, maybe $150, $200 at the most, usually you can get a starter rebuilt pretty cheap. So I did that and they told me it was too far gone, so I'm not a starter person. I don't know what's going on inside of that thing, but they said it was not rebuildable. So the only starter that they could find that would work, because uh, it's some goofy tooth count or something, it's hard to match to anything else, so they did find one, and they ordered it for me, and it's like $380 for the stinking thing, so that's a bit frustrating. And then it was down in Mexico, so it's going to take a, a week and a couple days to get here. because. So that leaves us right where we're at. Now, I didn't want to break this video up into two pieces, but uh, I guess there was always going to be a part two anyways, because I was going to get it running, and then go through the other stuff in another video and use it. But uh, looks like part two is going to be hopefully jamming the new starter into this thing, getting the engine running, and then also fixing all the stuff and using it. So so I am quite disappointed that I wasn't able to get it running in this video, but don't worry, if there's one thing I am, it's, it's persistent. This baby will run, I will get it going, and we will be packing dirt with it here before too long. I know a lot of you that watch the channel regularly know I have a lot of projects going and a lot of projects that sit for periods of time uh, until I get back on them but uh, I assure you this won't be one of them because I do need this thing. 
So even though you're probably really disappointed that uh, this thing isn't running right now, if you would, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up for persistence if nothing else, and uh, be sure you're already tickled that subscribe button so that you can catch part two when it comes out. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you later.